If you're running a business or have a significant role in one, you have problems and little fires that come up every single day. How you deal with them determines how successful your business is currently and how much it could grow. This podcast combines NLP with tactical solutions to help you solve those problems and accelerate your growth. Hi, I'm Kaylin Ellsbury, and I've been coaching entrepreneurs and executives for years. And when I discovered NLP, my entire world changed. I've grown up my entire life living inside hospitals, battling cystic fibrosis. And now I'm speaking all over the world and helping transform corporations from some of the very tactics you will learn here. Things like preventing burnout, improving productivity, increasing sales, and sharing the systems and processes to create a life where you are consistently a high performer. Welcome to Shark School. Oh my word, you all are going to hate or love me today. Hey Sharks, this is Kaylin, and we're kicking it off pretty aggressively today. So we're talking about how failure is not something to strive for. Scrolling Instagram today, I came across a rather interesting caption on somebody's feed. It was a photo of them, a selfie, naturally, because it's 2019, and do we do anything else? And as someone with a 43-module online course on how to market and sell using social media, I naturally am very keen to paying attention to people's stories and how they're leveraging them for their brand, right? So it makes sense. Anyways, this post reads, formula for success. Increase your rate of failure. You have to fail to be successful. Like you have to. Like you have to drink water to live. You have to fail to be successful. So don't let fear of failure hold you back because you have to fail if you want to be successful at anything. It's mandatory. It's (sighs) non-negotiable. Thank goodness this did not come from one of my sharks because I would pick up the phone instantly and discuss with them how their pursuit of failure is ultimately why they haven't succeeded. Their model of the world emphasized failing instead of success around systems and processes. And for that, today's episode will explore the culture we have as a society that my good friend and mentor, Deb Gabor, she owns Soul Marketing out of Austin, Texas, what she affectionately calls, and I 100% agree, failure porn. You know, I had $47 in my bank account. Now I'm here in my dream home with a nice car and whatever earthly possessions I want. Or I almost died. And now I leverage that to appreciate life. Or I lost everything. And through that absence, now I'm happy. Or I dropped out of corporate America to be unemployed and find myself. And now I'm happier. Or I was fired and it led me to find my path. Or That douchebag dumped me, but I'm okay. I'm going to pick right back up and find a man. Shut up, all of you. Seriously. I get it. Failure porn's trending. We all want to believe other people fail and learn these monumental life-changing lessons and go on to break barriers and create infinite success. However, the same people using failure porn are also using it as a marketing ploy to get your attention. So when you have a bad day, you can turn to them for inspiration. Seriously, stop it. Let me explain. This is my world. Just like you have your world. And we are brought together by different beliefs and opinions. And as long as we hold the same true moral values, values like don't kill people, don't rape people, incest is bad, be kind, etc. Society can move forward. And our lessons and legacies can be passed down to other generations. However, if you're wearing your failure like it was the key to your kingdom and ultimate advantage in life, I'm going to suggest something today entirely different. What if failure was feedback and not actually failure? What if you didn't accept you needed to fail? What if you strive for success, didn't acknowledge failure proudly, and reinvented the struggle as feedback to create a new system and process for how to proceed forward? Many of you, you're listening today, you've probably tuned in because you've heard my story or you found me uh, more than likely on LinkedIn or Instagram or through one of my keynotes. I'll upload some of those keynotes in the next week, just so if you're like, who is this chick? How does she even pronounce her name? Don't worry. I got you. You'll find the dang keynote. It's the ultimate failure porn story. I I kid you not. In fact, all of the above that I referenced, I left corporate America. I got fired. That douchebag dumped me. I had no money. Now I'm rich. All that stuff, I can only make fun of it because that's my story. However, unless you direct me, directly ask me about what I've gone through, That's not the point of my existence. We're going to go into a lot more depth on this, but but bear with me because I'm going to say some stuff today that might piss some of you off, and that's okay. If we learn how to respect the other person's model of the world, I hope that if you are one of the ones getting pissed off, 
that you're learning how to adapt your systems and processes to maybe try to understand where someone else is coming from rather than to be understood. Because I get it. Failure porn is sexy. Talking about your failures can be very comforting. Because all of those things above, those are my story. And not once throughout that entire story did I succumb to the reality that my failure was somehow acceptable. Sure, I said it to those who craved that lesson because you need to be able to communicate a lesson in different areas to reach out to different people. So sure, I did own it on a few podcasts and said it to those who really needed to hear that they were not alone in failing. However, you have to be flexible to create change in someone else's model of the world. So when you, fa- when you wear your failure like a trophy, there's a need payoff. Maybe it's not at the conscious level, but it's definitely at the unconscious level. So let's think about this. Failure comforts you rather than creates accountability for you. Failure is comfortable on a deeper level. Let me explain. So this client, um, <laughs> this is going to be an entertaining story. Okay, so this client recently talked about a slew of failures growing up. And I was in a coaching call with him, and he... He's really struggling right now. There's there's no way to word this struggle, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. He shared with me that he was a D student all through school. In fact, he was later expelled from high school. He was fired from five different jobs in rapid succession, so like one a year. Three failed marriages. Three failed marriages, everybody. Started an HR company, made money, but yet feels dead inside and isn't sure how things got to where they are. On our first freaking call, he confided, I failed so much, and that's why he's like, I can't talk. Not editing this out either, because I'm going to rant, and you're going to love it. On our first call, he confided that he's failed so much that he believes that's why he succeeded, and that's why he has financial stability right now, because each failure taught him something new. To which I told him he's absolutely looking this from a wrong lens. He's looking through the lens of something called failure porn rather than a proactive, what I call a shark mindset. How many of you are so confused about what I'm talking about? So let's call this cat Greg. Work with me. I'm going to do a quick role play of what our call was like. Greg, what did you tell yourself when you failed? That it's okay and I'll keep trying. Me. But what did you actually change? Greg. Well, nothing per se. I just kept going. Me. And then you had more and more setbacks along the route? Greg. Or what is his name? Yeah, Greg. (laughs) <laughs> and you had more and more setbacks on the route? Great. Yeah, but each one gave me more power to learn something. Me, are you happy with your life right now? Greg, no, not at all. I feel like I was expelled again. The D student, these feelings have never gone away. I worry it's why I have imposter syndrome and I'm not full of life. Me, but I thought failure taught you what you needed to know. Greg, I mean... It taught me that it's okay as long as they keep trying. Me. But what specifically did you change? Greg. I just felt better. Me. Right. How did you feel? Greg. Comforted, like I wasn't a mess up and I could relate to others in the same struggle. Me. And how do you feel around those who are more successful than you in your field? Greg. Like I should have known better. A bit of jealousy or envy. Like, why am I not successful? Why do I keep failing? Me. There's your dilemma. You gave failure the power, and instead of learning how to be more successful and find more success, you taught yourself failure can be comforting because you relate to anyone else who is failing and feel like you're part of a large tribe of failure addicts. When was the last time you were part of a success group that forced you to level up and fix the root problem when something didn't go your way? Greg. Never. I think I'm intimidated by that. Me. So if you're trying to run a marathon for the first time in your life, are you going to ask for advice from a marathon coach or an expert or someone who is grossly overweight and struggles walking upstairs? Greg, the marathon coach. Me, why? Greg, well, they're successful and they can teach me. Me, and yet you're intimidated if it's in your field. Your outlook on failure is like asking someone who doesn't know how to run a marathon for the guidance and then being disappointed when you're in the same situation countless times. You wouldn't create failure from the wrong coach unless there's a payoff, such as you didn't really intend to run yourself or push yourself or achieve new heights or new milestones. And now you can hide behind the facade of failure to feel better about setting a goal you didn't actually have or actually want the intention of actually accomplishing. Crickets. (laughs) 
<laughs> so I hope by that example, you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about. He literally got so comforted by failure that he was allowing himself to take advice and pursue other failures from people who were more messed up than he was. When you say I failed and that is why I learned, you are telling other people it's okay to fail with you because one day you'll figure it out. When you consider failure as feedback, you are forced to create new systems and processes and actually move the ball forward towards your desired outcome. But when you consider failure as a badge of honor that you must go through to be successful, you open yourself up to countless setbacks under the guise of, this is good for me, even if I can't understand it today, because there's a benefit here. And then your mind goes into discovering that benefit and like it or love it, the next time you're trying to shatter your own ceiling, you have the excuse of failure for when you don't wanna be held accountable to your own reality. Burn. So let's try an exercise to wrap this up. This is a very quick podcast today. We're gonna to try an exercise to wrap this up. So hopefully if you're listening to this, if you're at all resistant to what I'm saying, at the very least, you'll have a different way of accepting and rationalizing your failure. Number one, think of the last time you considered you failed. Can you remember a specific time? As you go back to that time, I want you to hear what you heard, see what you saw, feel what you felt in the moment you knew you failed. Now I want you to pause. And I want you to think of someone who's succeeding at exactly the thing you want to succeed at. What did they do to succeed that you did not? Specifically, what did they do? How did they respond? What actions did they take? What sacrifices did they make? And are you committed to doing the exact same thing? If not, just say this episode was a failure on my part and hang out with the other people who only see the problems and have a payoff for wearing their pain like a fucking trophy. Meanwhile, I'm going to be hanging out with those who see it as feedback and adjust my systems and processes to the point you won't be able to go anywhere on the internet without hearing my name. Great question to wrap up. If your life depended on it, could you do something? Whatever that goal is, I really want you to answer that question. If your life depended on it, could you do it? Yes or no? If you said yes, then you may or may not have a skills problem. If you said no, then it's an attitude problem. That last question could have been very difficult for some of you because you're coming face to face when if you have attitudes or skills problems and where that deficit is. So if you're ending this podcast and you're a little bit discouraged or you feel like I just went off on a rant that may not be applicable to you right now, I'd welcome you to always go back to those six questions and really think through it. There's a concept in NLP called modeling. And I've talked about this a couple of different times, but it's just, it's so important. And we always will come back to the 16 core principles. They're called presuppositions in NLP. And one is the quickest route to success is modeling those you most want to be like. We've all failed per se, but if we consider that instead of failure as feedback, one is limiting language and one is empowering language. If I thought about all the times I was fired, <laughs> thanks companies who know who I am. Um, if I thought about all the times I was fired and I considered it a failure, that's only opening up my mindset to know that the next time I have a deal go bad, or I get fired from working with a client or whatever it is that's saying, Hey, it's okay. I've failed before, but I've learned stuff in between each failure. I'm saying, stop. That's encouraging more failure. I'm saying in that situation, what you need to do is look at where you messed up. Be super accountable to yourself and create a bullet list. If you have to, of the 10 things you did wrong and find somebody who is crushing it at those 10 things, befriend them, associate with them, Learn their systems and processes and how they perceive the world in one of those categories. And only by then will you truly succeed. And you'll stop wearing this trophy that failure is good. Because in our household, it is unacceptable to fail. It is absolutely unacceptable to fail. In our household, 
we come together to try to break records or prove the impossible or strive for improvement every day. We don't talk about failure. We'll talk about great things that we've learned that we weren't aware of, but we don't disguise it under the comforts of that word because losers hang out with losers. That's just the birds of a feather flock together. We all know this. And I think when we really take the concept of failure porn to that level, we discover new heights within ourselves. So stop romanticizing failure. Instead, romanticize what led you to fail. Use those as feedback and then model the type of success you want from people who have the outcome you want. You ever notice that the people that talk the most shit are the ones not doing anything with their lives? Failure doesn't teach you a lesson if you're not strategic about that lesson and you can leverage it in the future. All right. Well, thank you all for tuning in. And uh, just head on over to the show notes page. Uh, Eventually, I'll get a website up uh, with all of, like, make it more legit and such. Um, I set the goal of 500 downloads. I'll create the website. So every download's a little step closer. I'm super grateful for all of you that listen, all of you that share all of you that tell your friends about this. And if you know somebody who's failing and they're just kind of down on themselves, send them some tough love, send them this link, tell them to reach out to me. Cause I think at the core, everybody wants to improve and everybody wants to be better. It's just when we come to terms with something we didn't succeed at right away, we tend to think that we're unloved or that we're not enough. And from there becomes all of these irrational thoughts such as failure was good. Failure doesn't have to be good. So head on over to the show notes page. I'll leave those six steps, give you a little bit more insight and as well as how to contact me. And as always, it goes without saying, NLP can be highly effective. And I always encourage those listening to do what's considered ecological, which is good for you, good for your team, and good for society as a whole. Check out www.misskalen.com, K-L-Y-N, and drop me a line with anything you'd like a solution to, or maybe a different model of the world to consider. Have a great one. Bye, sharks.